All right, I trust you did well on your test. If you're watching on YouTube, students in here did fairly well. A couple bonehead things here and there, but it is to be expected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, for the most part, they did well. Hopefully, you did also. Just a reminder, uh, in case you didn't catch this on the last video, um, the ACT practice test is due on Friday. That'll be lesson 47. I was able to hand it out to my students in here, but it was in the description of the last YouTube video, the one where we went over the test. So if you didn't notice that, go back to the previous video, get that uh, ACT practice test out of the description and start working on that. Again, lesson 47 is when we'll begin going over it. It usually takes more than one class period to finish going over all 60 questions, uh, but we'll see. So probably lesson 47, like part of lesson 48, will be dedicated to going over that ACT practice test because in here, um, we're about a week and a half away from that first ACT test, which many of you are signed up for. If you're watching on YouTube and you're staying on pace with us, um, probably your ACT is coming up as well, or your SAT perhaps coming up just a little bit after that. So hopefully this is timely help for you that you'll be getting in lessons 47 and 48. However, in pre-cal, we have been graphing sine and cosine, and we have flipped, and we have shifted, and we have stretched, and we have smushed. And we have done all kinds of stuff to the sine and cosine curve, and all the other trig functions have been feeling left out. Jamie, do you ever feel like another one of those trig functions? You just feel left out? <laughs> well, maybe. Okay. Well, no longer, Jamie. If we think of you as we think of, say, tangent, today is tangent's day. And so, in your notes, graphing f of x equals tangent of x. Oh Let's talk about graphing, graphing f of x equals the tangent of x. Now, granted, you may not be great with the unit circle, but I like to refer to the unit circle because I think it shows progressions well. And uh, so with the tangent of x, let's consider for a moment what different tangent values we will get. First of all, if the angle is 0, how big is the tangent line in class? Zero. 0. So at 0 degrees, we get a tangent of 0. At 30 degrees, you might remember the sine line is exactly half. But the tangent line is that little bit bigger than half, remember. So at 30 degrees, you might recall it's square root of 3 over 3. You don't actually have to have that exact number memorized. What I want you to remember is it's a little bigger than half. And if you were to plug that into the calculator, it would be about 0.6. It would round up to a 0.6, which should be easy to remember considering half, 0.5, a little bit bigger, 0.6. If you were to go to exactly 45 degrees, which again is not a nice easy box on the, uh, on the graphing plane, right? Because every 30 degrees gets the next box. But if you were to do 45 degrees, the tangent line is going to equal the radius. In a 45, 45, 90, you get a nice easy 1. Well, since it's such an easy number, this is a commonly used graphing number for tangent because it's easier than, say, 0.6. If we were to extend further and go out to 60 degrees, you have a true 30, 60, 90 right triangle with sides of 1, 2, square root of 3. So at 60 degrees, you have the square root of 3, which is about 1.7. But at 90 degrees, the tangent class is undefined. Now, how in the world are we supposed to graph an undefined value? You can't. There's going to be a point at 90 degrees or at pi over 2 where you literally cannot graph it at all. And you might remember, if you go back in your mind to rational functions back in Algebra 2, we talked about graphing some hyperbolas in which there were undefined values. Remember, denominator couldn't be 0. And we said, well, if the denominator is like x plus 3, then x can't be negative 3. So at negative 3, we put a little dotted line, and the graph couldn't touch it. Do you remember what it was called? It's called an asymptote. Write this term in your notes. Asymptote. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. That is a silent P. Why is it there? Just to make spelling errors happen. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. <laughs> That's the only purpose of silent letter. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Anyway, like in pneumonia, for instance. Pneumonia um, starts with an N, doesn't it? It starts with a P. P N E U M O N. <laughs> so, anyways, it's, you know, or Noki, right? Noki starts with a G, G N O C C H I. We have that all the I know, it's true. Um, on, chicken Noki soup. I like it. My wife found a knockoff recipe, and now we don't go to Olive Garden anymore. She makes it at home in the Instant Pot. <laughs> um, but, anyways, <laughs> it tastes like it. It tastes very close. It's very close. 
Uh, it's not exactly the same. And there's not the, the, you know, the setting, the mood, and all of that. You know, with somebody coming to take your order, you can boss them around and say, hey, boy, go get me more to drink. And, hey, boy, get more juice on there. Drink. That's called so I would move you to a different table. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but asymptote uh, is what we call this line where the graph is going to go and never touch. But you'll notice it's because if you continue to increase the angle, that tangent line just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? In turn, along with the secant line, but the tangent line keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's essentially approaching infinity, is the idea. As soon as you get to the second quadrant, though, here in quadrant one, obviously everything's positive. But in quadrant two, the tangent is going to be negative. So now when I come to, say, a, um, a, uh, my next angle would be 30 more degrees, would be 120 degrees. Now my tangent line is still that same square to 3 from earlier, but it's now negative square to 3, or negative 1.7. Then you come back down to uh, the uh, 135 degrees, you got that same radius length, that 1 at 135 degrees. But again, it's negative 1 because it's in quadrant 2. You come another 30 degrees here, and now we're just a little bit bigger than half, but again, it's going to be negative at 150 degrees. We get that negative. 0.6 or negative square root of 3 over 3, and you go all the way around to 180, and the tangent line goes back to zero. zero. Now let's consider what happens in the third quadrant. In quadrant 3, the tangent's going to go back to being positive again. And so 180, of course, we left off with a zero. We go 30 more degrees, now what's the tangent line? Square root of 3 over 3 over 0.6. Positive. Square root of 3 over 3 over 0.6. You go to the 45 degree, and it's going to equal the tangent line, right? Positive 1. 30 more degrees, and I've got positive square root of 3. You go 30 more degrees at the 270, and you're now undefined again. As soon as you go into the fourth quadrant, though, tangent goes back to being negative. negative. And 30 more degrees gives you the negative 1.7. 45 degrees, negative 1, or 315 technically, 30 more degree, or 15 more degrees at the, uh, what is that, the 330, negative 0.6. And then back to 360, all the way around, you're back at 0. So we're actually that graph. Do you see that quadrants 3 and 4 are literally the exact same values in order as 0 to 180? That's what 180 to 360 is going to produce. What that means is the tangent finishes one complete cycle by the time you hit 180. You don't need a full 2 pi to finish tangent. So if you write this down for tangent, the period equals pi, not 2 pi. Sine and cosine, the period was, pi, was 2 pi, but tangent's period is just pi. I want you to consider as well the range of output values that we get from the tangent. It starts at 0, and it goes all the way up to Infinity. infinity. And in the next quadrant, it has a zero all the way down to negative infinity because it's in quadrant two. There's literally nothing you can't get, right? Anywhere from zero to infinity or zero to negative infinity, anything in there, the tangent line could end up equaling, right? So we'd say the range is all real numbers. That means along the y-axis or the f of x-axis, rather, Tangent can go as high as you want, as low as you want. Sine and cosine are bounded between the negative 1 and 1, right? Kept bumping that negative 1 and 1 mark. Not the, not the tangent. It's boundless vertically. But let's consider the domain of what we're going to see. We're good from 0 up to the 90, but at 90, you cannot graph it. That's a limitation, isn't it? You can't graph the tangent right at 90 degrees. Anywhere in quadrant 2 to quadrant 3, you're good. But as soon as you hit 270, you're stuck, right? Now, in terms of radians, at pi over 2, you can't graph it. Down here at 3 pi over 2, you can't graph it. Well, if you were to go another back around a second time, you'd have to add 2 pi. If you add 2 pi to this, you'd get 5 pi over 2. You can't graph it. Pi later ends up being 7 pi over 2. You can't graph it. And then you get 9 pi over 2, and then at 11, 11 pi over 2, and then at, do you see the pattern? As long as the number in front of the pi is an 
odd. odd integer, you can't graph it. So the domain, other than that, though, you're good, right? Anywhere else you can get a value. It's just at those odd pi over twos. So the domain is going to be all real numbers except at n pi over two when n is an odd integer, or I'm going to be lazy to say n is odd. But we understand that means odd integer, technically. So again, domain for sine and cosine, anything. There were no limits, but you do have a limit on the domain of the tangent. There was a limit on the range of sine and cosine, but no limit on the range of tangent. The period of sine and cosine was 2 pi. The period of tangent is pi. There's going to be an asymptote or asymptotes at the n pi over 2 when n is odd on the graph. There were no asymptotes for sine and cosine. You get the idea this graph is going to be really different from what we're used to with sine and cosine, which is good if you were getting bored with the sine and cosine curves. So let's go ahead and get some graph paper out. Let's actually graph what we've been talking about. Let's arrowheads on our axes. Would not want to lose points on a quiz or test <clears throat> or exam uh, for forgetting those. X and f of x labels, of course. You're not supposed to you know, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. You want to do negative pi over 2 to really, you know. And of course, same, same units we had before, right? 1, every two boxes, 1. So at least the, the grid setup, the Cartesian plane setup, is the same as what we had before. No change there. Why are we going to put 2 pi there if we can't graph 2 pi? Well, you can. No. In fact, you could graph it infinitely, except at n pi over 2 when n is odd. Let's go ahead and plot our points. Starting at 0 degrees, or rather 0 radians, our value is 0. At 30 degrees, or rather pi over 6, the value is 0.6. It's just a little above the 1 half. In fact, let me, let me zoom in a little bit here. Save with the... Uh, no, it's not much, but want to get it as soon as I can. Um, and then at 45 degrees, which is going to be right here, by the way, pi over 4, it's right at 1. Let's go ahead and plot that as well. I think that'll help us. Then at the 60 degrees, or the uh, pi over 3, that is 1.7. There's going to be about halfway between the 1.5 and, and the 2. But at pi over 2, it's undefined, so we're going to put... A dotted line. By the way, this is why we used a solid line for our f of x prime axis before, rather than a dotted line, because I didn't want it to appear that we had an asymptote. Oh, like I do on the exam? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> well, let's not talk about the exam on YouTube, please. Um, I don't think that was uh, egregious, but let's keep exam comments to a minimum. All right, so when we graph this, we're starting here at zero, and we're curving upward, and we're approaching but not touching the asymptote. So a quick refresher for you. Okay? If the line goes like this and touches the asymptote, that you would lose points. Okay? Um, also, if the line goes like this and you stop, at least you didn't touch the line, but you're pretty much going to crash, right? Okay? This, is, this is a bad trajectory. Um, if the line runs parallel, well, it also doesn't do that. It constantly approaches the asymptote but never touches, you might recall. So that would also be wrong. Uh, so what we want to do is kind of hit this happy medium where it's definitely not going to be a crash landing. And once you get really close to the line, you're still approaching it. You're not parallel, right? You're approaching, but you're not touching it. Just stop. Okay? You don't have to graph all the way to the top of the grid. Just stop. And that gives the appearance or the impression of approaching but not touching the line. If you're ever really bored sometime, take a graphing calculator. Type in the tangent of x into the graphing calculator and then zoom in on the asymptote and you'll just keep, you'll basically look like it just keeps getting closer and closer. But every time you zoom in, it just blows it up again and you see it getting closer and closer constantly. Never touches the asymptote. Let's come to the second quadrant where after the undefined asymptote, the next box is at negative 1.7. So there's the half box later is the 1 and the full box later the negative 0.6. And we're back to zero. When I graph this, by the way, I would start here at the zero. 
and curve down. No crashes, no touching, no parallel. So don't touch it, don't go parallel to it, but don't crash into it either, or crash, approach a crash landing. Okay, so nice and smooth in. And that's one full period of the tangent curve. Now, generally for good measure, we'll replicate out to two pi just to you know make sine and cosine, you know, or make tangent not feel so bad. It only gets half as much publicity. We wouldn't want you know Jamie to get half as much airtime. So we'll replicate the entire first quadrant over the third quadrant. We already have the zero. Here's the 0.6, the 1, the 1.7, and then at 3 pi over 2, we said we're going to have another asymptote. <clears throat> Approach, don't touch, don't go parallel. That's close to going parallel. Also, a reminder, don't curve away from it. Okay? It doesn't go away, it doesn't go parallel, it doesn't crash, it doesn't touch. It approaches but doesn't touch. And we're going to replicate the entire second quadrant over here in the fourth quadrant. And so there's two full cycles, technically, of the tangent curve. And again, we get this idea, especially when we finish the third quarter, of this whoop, all the way up. And you can see the range being infinite better when you graph both the second and third quadrants together. You see the full whoop thing. And you realize, of course, they could do the same thing here. And if we were to go beyond 2 pi, back around the unit circle again, it would finish another whoop, and then another asymptote, and then whoop, and then another asymptote, and then whoop, up, you know, so on and so forth. Here, you know, it's if we were to go backwards, it's whoop, and then another asymptote, whoop, and then another asymptote. It just keeps whooping, and whoop, depending on which direction you're going. And you just keep hitting these asymptotes every n pi over 2 when n is odd. Make sense? You don't actually have to make sound effects when you're dictating quizzes and tests. In fact, it's, it's advisable that you not, but, you know, I like sound effects. Drives my wife nuts sometimes. You have a sound effect for everything. I know, life is cooler with sound effects. Can you imagine, like, watching TV with no sound effects? Like, no crowd noise at the, you know, Miami Dolphins games? What crowd? <laughs> they haven't have put the crowd noise in. Why are you attacking the organization? <laughs> Questions on this. Do we see how to graph the tangent curve? One more thing I want you to get down real quick. Key points. Key points. Normally, our key points are the quadrantals, but this is going to be really boring if we do this. Watch. Zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote, zero. Are literally your key points. Anyway, zero, A, zero, A, zero. I'm going to help us out by remembering that exactly between the zero and the asymptote is a one and then after the negative one, then a one, then a negative one. So I'm going to put in little helpful points here just to help us remember that as well. So my key points are zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote, zero, but that doesn't help you graph it. I want you to remember the ones in between the zeros and asymptotes and the negative ones in quadrants two and four. So our first and third are positive, second and fourth part are negative. Questions on key points? That way, if you remember the basic curve, you don't necessarily have to include the point sixes. And these, if they weren't here, you could probably still sketch a decent curve, even without the point six and the one point seven. But it's helpful. Yes, sir. Two things. Do you have one of those graphing calculators? Um, it's like it's an app online you can use. And also, how can something that never touch it but constantly be moving closer to it? Eventually, it would touch. Correct. No, nope, never. How? Because the distance between can be measured smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but there's infinitely small units out there, right? Picometers, for instance. If you wanted to go, you know, trillionths of a meter, for instance. Or the Google, the biggest number ever. Yeah, whatever, right? So, um, it, it, again, it's this, the idea of infinity, period, right? We just call it undefined, but the idea of infinity, period, is just mind blowing. We can't grasp it. Why? Because we're finite. We don't have all knowledge. God understands it great, because He is infinite. He is like the math we are looking at, the math is a reflection of Him. We don't understand because we're not like him yet. One day we'll be like so him. So quite literally, even say say you have an X or, I don't know, a line, and then you literally cross it, it literally to the micro, 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 micrometer, you can graph that. Like, it will just continually get closer and closer. Like, it will eventually hit. There's no way it doesn't hit. There's no that concept touches. possible that it will never touch. It's not. It is. <laughs> There's always space between them. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Um, let's talk about the cotangent now. 
It's okay. You don't have to understand, just like with God and eternity, right, and heaven. We can't understand it all, but we don't have to understand the Trinity. That's a mind-blowing one right there. But we don't have to understand. We take what Scripture says, what God says, and as I say, if I could understand everything about God, I would be God. But I don't understand everything about God because I am not God. Well, I am that. But anyway, uh, F of X equals the cotangent of X. Uh, now, here's the nice thing about this. The cotangent is simply the reciprocal of the tangent. That's not true of sine and cosine, right? They're not reciprocals. They're cofunctions, but not reciprocals. Tangent and cotangent are not only cofunctions. They are also reciprocals. So what we're going to do is take the reciprocal of all of these values. So instead of starting at 0 over 1, we would take the reciprocal, 1 over 0, which starts us at undefined. We'll take the reciprocal of 1 over the square root of 3. If I go back to the unrationalized form, when I flip it, it gives me the square root of 3, or 1.7. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of the square root of 3 is 1 over the square root of 3, or square root of 3 over 3, or 0.6. And the reciprocal of undefined 1 over 0 is 0. Everything just gets flipped. So um, if I were to graph this, I'm going to show the graph first, actually. If I were to graph this, instead of a 0, I have undefined, which means I need an asymptote where the tangent has a 0. Where the ta tangent has an asymptote, I need a 0. Where it has a 1, I share the 1, because the reciprocal of 1 is 1. But the 1.7 becomes the 0.6, and the 0.6 becomes the 1.7. So here, instead of going whoop this way, it's going whoop that way. And then second quadrant's negative, right? But negative square root of 3 over 3 becomes the 0.6. This stays 1. This becomes the 1.7. This becomes another asymptote. And so... Tangent, like that. And guess what it's going to do in quadrants three and four? The same thing. Asymptote, zero. Asymptote, keep the one, keep the negative one. Let's see if I can do this without the key points. Approach, but don't touch. Approach, but don't touch. And we see another, ooh. And we can just keep looping over and over and over again that way and this way, by the way, going backward. We can continue doing it over and over. So let's analyze some things about the cotangent. First of all, what are its key points? Well, instead of zero asymptote, zero asymptote, zero, it's asymptote, zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote. The zeros and asymptotes trade places because they're reciprocals. But the ones and the negative ones their reciprocals are themselves, so we keep the ones and negative ones. You'll notice as well, by the way, that all the tangent curve is is one, ooh, right? Over and over and over again. But like the tangent, the whole ooh is done by the time you get to pi, right? So like tangent, the period of the curve is pi. Also like tangent, notice the range. As high as infinity, as low as infinity. So the range is all real numbers. But what about the domain? This is where it's going to change just a little bit. I'm not sure why I had a colon there. It's it was even instead of odd. Exactly. Now here we go. We've got our asymptotes at zero pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative pi. And some students are like, well, that's whole number pi's. And you'd be right, integer pi's. But to keep the same format, you could call this 0 pi over 2. You could call pi 2 pi over 2. You could call 2 pi 4 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2. And that keeps the same basic style. So we'll say the domain is all real numbers except at n pi over 2 when n is even. And obviously, because n is even, it's going to end up being whole number pi's. But this just keeps a consistent phraseology between n pi over 2 when n is odd, n pi over 2 when n is even. And okay, so just remembering that. But otherwise, very similar. Same range, 
same period, the domain just changes the location of the asymptotes from odd n pi over 2 to even n pi over 2, and key points, we change out the asymptotes and the zeros. Very easy to graph both of them. Go ahead and graph on the same graph grid, where you already did the tangent, maybe change to a different color of ink, or change to a pen, or change to a pencil, or maybe you know, whatever. But uh, go ahead and graph the cotangent curve on top of the existing sine curve. It also looks kind of like, like a DNA strand if you have both of them going at the same time. But anyway, I'm go ahead and graph the cotangent curve. And be careful with those asymptotes. That will be a point of pickiness when I grade. Again, since we cannot, you know, since we're human, our ability to make sure it approaches but never touches is limited enough that as soon as you get really close, so just stop. Because you are too human to be able to make it actually work. And again, the same thing was true with the rational functions in algebra 2, where you had your asymptotes. Do we remember this now? The hyperbolic asymptotes. Mm -hmm. What was this for, for? This was right at the end of first quarter. So then one of the last, or fourth, third quarter, excuse me, one of the last things we would have talked about. I think it was one that I did on the sideboard. Downstairs. Yeah. yeah. You should always ask for the sideboard. That's true. That's true because it's a graphic concept, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, whatever. <laughs> <Sorry about it. laughs> but you're right. Are we going like cosecant the way that way? Not today. We'll save that for tomorrow. Enough mind blowing for one. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever understand the concept of this. No, like, I'll understand how to do it. I'll understand that, but I won't understand the concept of it. It makes zero sense to me. Then like how God has always existed. Yeah. Like, even before there was a world here, God still existed. Heaven has always existed. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. How does something exist out of nothing? Like, and, and always have existed. Yeah, and that's the best. We that. can't grasp that because we have a beginning. Right? This Pope lectern had a beginning. There was a time and place where they made this, right? Everything around us had a beginning. Even the world itself had a beginning. So we can't understand God not having one. Exactly. And that's the theory. That's the and then evolution will bring up Big Bang theory. But how did something come out of nothing when you're denying or something that came out of nothing? And then again, the idea of eternity, right? Like forever in heaven, like forever, like when I think about it, it makes me yeah. like butterflies and stuff. I'm like forever. Yeah, it's too, it's, you can't, you can't. We're limited. You can't time. think yes. of forever. Like it, yeah. your body and your mind can't fathom forever. All right. Questions on the cotangent. Now, I do want to mention this as well. Then, as I move on, um, the tangent and cotangent curve. Whoops. Whatever you want to call them. Um, they can also be shifted up and down. Oh my goodness. They can be shifted side to side. They could be stretched or smushed. They could be flipped. All those things we saw before for the sine and cosine are fair game now. So a quick refresher. If we had, say, f of x is equal to positive negative b, positive negative a, tangent b times x minus plus h. I hate it here. We can have vertical shift. We can have inversion. We can have an amplitude change. We can have a period change. But the period would be pi over b, not 2 pi over b, because it's tangent whose period is traditionally pi, not 2 pi. And we could shift negatively forward, positively backward, horizontally. All those things can happen to the tangent and to the cotangent. So let's take a look at a couple of these changes here. Why do you look so happy? <laughs> Why is that pretty funny to you? I always am happy inflicting torture, comrade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So write this equation, this function down if you would, and get out a new uh, graph grid ready to go. Uh, f of x equals 2 minus the tangent of x. f of x equals 2 minus the tangent of x. Everybody's looking forward to their next quiz yeah. already. I always wanted to do that, but definitely. Maybe one day when we're not on camera. 
things we'll let you do this. Kind of like we let you know people in geometry try to draw the circles on the chalkboard mm -hmm. you know, off camera. So maybe maybe one of those. I was always the best at it. Of course. I actually don't remember who was or wasn't. So we'll just take your word for it. It was the me. best. It was me. Well, I mean, besides me, that's a suit. It's good. I can't <laughs> also. It was. It was actually. It was really me. <laughs> well, we'll try your Cartesian plane now. If you had a straight edge, you could. I think. <laughs> no, I don't think you could. I, I used to not be able to do it because then my pins would slip by the straight edge. I don't know how to hold that straight edge. All right, so there's two shapes.